Hey everybody, Rebecca here at the workplace. I got here a little bit early today, so I'm gonna see if I have enough time to get the July budget preview filmed before I have to go in and clock in. So let's see how quickly we can do this. If you're new to me and my channel, I am here on YouTube documenting my journey to reach financial independence and retire early. So a big part of that is for years now, I have been sharing my budgets every single month on my channel. These are my real numbers showing all the money that I'm bringing in every month and how I spend it, save it, or invest it. So if you enjoy that type of stuff, then scroll down a bit, click subscribe, and follow me on this fire journey. For my budgets every month, I like to use Google Sheets. So let's hop in and take a look. All right, here it is. This is the July budget plan. So what we're focusing on here is column C. This is how I plan to spend the money that I bring in every month. I fill in column D as the month goes on. And at the end of the month, I do a budget review and we take a look at how well I actually planned for the month. So the top section here, first we're taking a look at my net income. This is the money that I'm bringing home every month. I do have my paychecks blacked out for privacy. Um, I don't show all of my sources of income, but I do show some and I show the totals at the bottom. And overall for July, I'm expecting to bring in about 4,300. One of my paychecks will have some overtime on it. So that's helpful. AdSense is my YouTube paycheck every month and I earn about $100 every month doing this little channel here. So thank y'all as always for watching and liking and doing all of those things. Next, we'll take a look at the bills and spending portion of the budget. These are my regular bills every month. Starting at the top, my house payment every month is $576. My power bill, I'm budgeting about $100 for that. Water bill, budgeting $40 there. My internet should be $99 a month now that I am on Starlink and loving that. Next, gas for my car. I am going to get some overtime hours in July as well so I probably ought to bump that up a little bit but I'll leave it at 100 we'll see what happens I'll probably go over but if I do it's no big deal I mean I gotta buy gas for my car no matter how much I'm driving or what the gas prices are right so after that is my gym membership I go to Planet Fitness that's 2306 every month and groceries and household and anything personal care items um alcohol, anything I buy for a Rollo at the store, everything kind of goes into this category. It tends to be a catch-all and I've decided to just up this budget every month. I used to have it at $350 a month and I blow it 99% of the time. So I'm just going to up it to 400 to be a little bit more realistic there we'll see how that goes. Next, Farm Bureau Renewal. This is who I have my house insurance through and they charge $25 a year as a membership fee. So that should come through sometime in July. And lastly, lawn care. I do pay someone to come and cut my grass for me and I'm expecting that to be about $200 for the month of July. And that brings my grand total to $1,563.06 for the month of July if everything goes exactly according to plan which it never does but <laughs> at least this gives me an idea of what I should be spending every month after that my debt section down here I have two debts left that I am working on that are non-mortgage debt I have my student loans those payments every month are about $475 my car payment this is the one that I am currently working on trying to get paid off early I'm making aggressive payments on my car payment every month my minimum payment every month is $365 y'all can see I am planning on throwing $1,750 at my car payment in July. That brings my total to debt for the month at $2,225. That's a lot of money to throw at debt. Wish I could invest it instead, but it's going to be good to get my car paid off. Last section down here is my investing and fire tracking section of the budget. And oh, I need to fill in my work stuff. All right, the last section of my budget here, I had to update that because I no longer use my Ally Savings account and I had to fill in my employer 403B information. Anyway, I have a taxable account with M1 Finance and Fidelity and I'm not planning on throwing anything at M1 Finance. 
my Roth IRA at M1 Finance is already maxed out for 2021. So most of my extra money that I have for July, I am throwing at my car payment. I'm hoping that I'll have an extra 500 that I can throw into my Fidelity account and add that to my overall savings slash travel slash options play money. And for my retirement account at work, my 403B, I'm expecting that my pre-tax contributions will be around $450. I am getting some overtime, so it might be a little bit over that. We'll see. And my employer match should be around $350. That brings the total for investing for the month at $1,300. And to take a look here, if everything this month goes exactly as planned, I'm just going to copy and paste the budgeted column into the actual column and we'll see what my savings rate ends up being for the month if everything was to go exactly according to plan here. All right, so that would give me a savings rate of about 25% for the month, which eh, that's not super great if you're in the fire movement. I personally aim for a 50% savings rate, but I don't include my debt payments in my savings rate. Some people do. I just don't like to do that. So when I'm throwing this much extra money at my debt, that is why it affects my savings rate for the month. But it is what it is. I owe about $13,500 on my car. So, I mean, if I'm able to make like $1,500 payments every month, then this thing will be paid off relatively quickly and I can get back to throwing extra money to investing. And in case you're wondering about this, am I financially independent box yet here? This will populate whenever I fill in the balances of all of these different investing accounts over in this column E here. I just haven't done that yet because it is not July yet, so whenever July rolls around, I'll update this column E with all of the various investing account balances where they currently stand as of July 1st, and then that will calculate how close I am to my financial independence number. I'm aiming for 1.2 million invested, and currently when I'm filming this video, it is middle of June, so I am about 10% of the way to my financial independence number. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the July budget. If you did, leave me a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe to follow me on this financial independence retire early journey. It is now time for me to go and grind out another third shift here at work. So let's go earn another paycheck, shall we? I'll catch y'all in my next video. Bye, guys.